four men meet in White's, the exclusive London club in Pall Mall, in 1948. They were all Etonians, and they'd had a good war. They'd been in the Navy, and they'd achieved rank. They quaffed champagne. They ate a four-course dinner. And then over brandies, their mind came to, to think about the future. And one by one, each of them was asked to declare what their plan for the future was. And we would know nothing of that conversation were it not for the fact that one of those four was a Rothschild who was a compulsive diarist and would return home at the end of a day and write almost verbatim the word-for-word -word conversations that he'd had. One said, I can't live without the adrenaline. I need to go back into the forces. Another said that I'm going into the family business. It's time to make money. Another said, I'm going to tap Macmillan. I'm going to try and get a safe Tory seat. And the fourth one caused hilarity because he said to them, I'm going to be an author. And they laughed because he said, you know, when you were at school, you, you could hardly string together a sentence. How can you be an author? He said, I am going to be an author, but I need your help to construct the character that will make me famous. And they began debating about a secret agent. Do we send him to our old school, Eton? No, we'll have him expelled from Eton and sent to Fetus. We'll have the mark of Cain on him. <laughs> we'll send him to Cambridge, but we'll have him doing a weird subject that nobody's heard of, Oriental Studies. <laughs> then came the discussion about rank. Well, if he's a maverick, he won't really get beyond commander. Yes. How will he be called? Well, I've heard about this anthropologist, James Bond, and I'm going to have him, whenever he's asked about his name, I'm going to have him say, just as he would to his housemaster, my name's Bond, James Bond. But it was right at the end, when they were getting their coats, that the real kind of thing, the, 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 the spellbounding thing was said. Fleming turned to the three friends before they stepped out into the, the night air of Pall Mall and said, you know what? I'm going to cripple him emotionally. I'm going to have him be the man at work that all his work colleagues say behind his back. Do you know who that is? That's James Bond, the man whose wife died on their wedding day. And that singular moment in his life will be the defining one because no woman will compare to her. And it will make him a formidable adversary, says Fleming, because nothing now will really matter. Over the last few years, I've been struck by the power of our memories and how they can control us and, and sometimes imprison us. I hear that, that Pope Francis carries in his cassock a little picture of an icon that he once saw in a Lutheran church in Germany, and it's called uh, Mary, the Untire of Knots. And it features the Mother of Christ in the middle of two angels. And one cherubim is passing to Mary a cord with knots, and she's untying the knots and passing them to the other cherubim. And they think that the knots in Pope Francis's life concern three Jesuit priests who he can't get over the fact were arrested once he'd denied them the ability to have a license in Argentina and they were tortured and they were killed and that apparently weighs heavily on Francis's mind and his conscience. Those are the knots in his life. I wonder, in our lives, whether we're able to pass to God the knots that restrict us in our thinking and our hopes for the future. Rowan Williams, in his book called Resurrection, says something which I find quite helpful. He says, you know, when we think of Christ saving us, we always think of him saving us in the present and in the future, we don't realize always that he saves us from our memories 
and enters into our memories and heals us of them. I do like that idea. God, the great reconciler, in times when it's almost easier to love our enemies than ourselves, he comes in and he reconciles us to ourselves. I must remember that. <laughs> Amen.